Now let's look at this figure 501-18 that deals with intrinsically safe equipment as defined in Article 100 of the NEC Part 3. And this equipment is selected in 500.7e in the NEC. And basically, you know, you can use intrinsically safe equipment anywhere, as long as it's uh, listed and labeled for that uh, uh, usage wherever you're installing it. And then notice if you install the intrinsically safe barrier and the classified area, uh, then you have to have seals and explosion proof enclosure and so forth. But if you install it in the uh, non-hazardous area, and it's just intrinsically safe equipment, then 504.20 uh, says you can use any of the wiring methods in the 300 series. Uh, and it also says in uh, 501.70 that you do not even have to have seals for those enclosures containing only intrinsically safe systems. So those are some questions that we get quite often uh, is, do we need seals? Uh, Will we install the barrier? Does it need explosion proof enclosure? Uh, what are the wiring methods that we could be used? So those sections are kind of important, 504.20, uh, 504.70. And then notice that uh, you can review Stockup's Volume 1 in Designing Electrical Systems and start on a page, uh, oh, approximately page 4-12, review starting with figure 4-20, and you have a series of illustrations and figures that illustrate how uh, intrinsically safe equipment should be installed in accordance with Article 504. Now, that's basically uh, what this figure uh 21-18 is illustrating to the designer and installer uh, using uh, intrinsically safe equipment in accordance with the NEC, uh, which would uh, have those requirements in Article 504.